Today's lesson is a continuation of adding and subtracting numbers that are written in scientific notation. However, today we're going to talk about different powers of 10 with that scientific notation. If you're following along in the purple textbook, we're on page 73, textbook page 73. So, if you do not have the same power of 10, you need to rewrite each number in the same power. And you can convert to the smaller power or the large, larger power, it won't matter. Then make sure the final answer is in scientific notation. So you must put them into the same power of 10 prior to adding and subtracting. So real life example, suppose at the end of one winter there are about, about, one and five tenths times 10 to the seventh square kilometers of ice in the Arctic Ocean. By the end of the summer, much of the ice has melted and there are only about seven times 10 to the six square kilometers of ice left. How much ice melted? So this is definitely asking to find the difference, which is a subtraction problem really asking about what is the difference from the beginning of the summer to the end of the summer. So I have 1 and 5 tenths times 10 to the 7th at the beginning, and I'm going to find the difference of 7 times 10 to the 6th square kilometers at the end of the summer. So I'm going to find their difference. I'm going to convert to 10 to the 6th. Let's convert to the smaller power this time. So, to convert 1 and 5 tenths times 10 to the 7th to 10 to the 6th, I'm going to have to move my decimal one place to the right. So that would give me 15 times 10 to the negative first, right? Times 10 to the 7th minus 7 times 10 to the 6th. So moving my decimal 1 to the right is like subtracting 1 from my power of 10. So I really have 15 times 10 to the 6th, doing that product of a power, keep that base, negative 1 plus 7, add those, I'm going to get 6. So I have 15 times 10 to the 6th minus 7 times 10 to the 6th. Now my powers are the same. So I can do my 15 take away 7, can do the coefficients, and factor out that common times 10 to the 6th, and I get 8 times 10 to the 6th is the answer. 8 times 10 to the 6th is a number in scientific notation. It's not 18, it's not 8 tenths, it's 8 one decimal place value that's between 1 and 10, less than 10, times the power of 10. So I am in scientific notation, and the answer would be how much ice melted? 8 times, whoops, 8 times 10 to the 6th kilometers squared of ice melted that summer. Could I have converted both to the higher power, 10 to the 7th? Yes, I could have converted both to 10 to the 7th, and I, and I would get the same answer, 8 times 10 to the 6th. I would get that. If I changed this to 10 to the 7th, it would have been 7 tenths times 10 to the 7th. And when I subtracted those, I would get 8 tenths times 10 to the 7th. And then I would have to move that to make the final answer 8 times 10 to the 6th. So I could have, I could have converted to 10 to the 7th, and yes, I would get the same answer. So example number two, the approximate area, approximate notice, area of the Pacific Ocean is 6 and 4 tenths times 10 to the 7th square miles. The area of the Arctic Ocean is about 5 and 4 tenths times 10 to the 6th 
square miles. I would have thought the Arctic Ocean was much smaller than the Pacific Ocean. It is smaller, but how much smaller? We can figure that out. First, let's find part A says, find the sum of the areas of the two oceans. So six and four tenths times 10 to the seventh plus sum five and four tenths times 10 to the sixth. And this time, I think I will convert both to 10 to the sixth. I'll go to the smaller power again. So converting 6 and 4 tenths times 10 to the 7th, I would move the decimal one place to the right. That would give me 64 times 10 to the 6th. That subtracts 1 from my power. And I would rewrite that as 64 times 10 to the 6th plus that 5 and 4 tenths times 10 to the 6th. Adding those together, I get 69 and six and four tenths, four tenths, 69 and four tenths times 10 to the sixth. But that's not a number in scientific notation. So you have to be careful. I probably should have gone to 10 to the seventh, gone to the higher power, because now I'm gonna have to move this decimal one place to the left, which is gonna add one exponent with the power of products, because this would be 6 and 94 hundredths times 10 to the first times that 10 to the sixth. Well, you know, I don't have to write that in between step. I can do this part in my head and say, oh, okay, 6 and 94 hundredths, do that product of the powers, 10 to the first times 10 to the sixth, would give me 10 to the seventh. That's the number in scientific notation. I'm going to wait to the end and sable both questions at once. But we are going to sable today. 6 and 94 hundredths times 10 to the sevenths is the sum, the approximate sum, of the areas of the Pacific and Arctic Ocean. About how much larger is the Pacific Ocean than the Arctic Ocean? Uh, okay, so now I'm going to find their difference. So larger ocean should come first, right, which is the Pacific. Six and four tenths times 10 to the seventh minus five and four tenths times 10 to the sixth. Well, I already converted over here the six and four tenths um, to the power of six, the same power. So I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna use that same math that I've already done for the adding and change it to 64 times 10 to the sixth minus five and four tenths times 10 to the sixth. 64 take away five and four tenths would be 58 and six tenths times 10 to the sixth. And moving that back one place, because 58 is not a coefficient between one and less than 10, so five and 86 hundredths, however, is and moving my decimal back to the left is like adding one to my power of 10. It's like multiplying by 10. I'd need one more power of 10 to get back up to that 58 and 6 tenths. So 5 and 86 hundredths times 10 to the seventh is a number in scientific notation. So sabling both questions at once just to save some time, the sum of the areas of the oceans is about, and yes, if you want to say Arctic and Pacific, you can write that in there, is about, about, remember these are, you know, approximate areas, so I'm going to use about um, in my sable six and 94 hundredths, the sum times 10 to the seventh, my label would be miles squared. And the difference for the Pacific Ocean, and I could say it that way, and the Pacific Ocean, or I could say difference, and the Pacific Ocean is about 
again using about, because this is not exact, 5 and 86 hundredths times 10 to the 7th square miles or miles squared larger. And if you want to add then the Arctic Ocean, you can. So there's my very long sable for both answers. Example three. The approximate area of the continent of Australia. And you can see a picture of Australia, some very small picture of Australia down here with Tunisia. And a very um, small picture of um, also Antarctica down here. So Australia is larger. Oh, no, Antarctica. Antarctica is larger. It says the approximate area of the continent of Australia is 9 times 10 to the 6 square kilometers. The area of the continent of Antarctica is about 1 in 37 hundredths times 10 to the 7 square kilometers. Find the sum of the areas. Okay, so the sum here, 9 times 10 to the 6 for Australia plus 1 and 37 hundredths times 10 to the 7th for Antarctica. And I'm going to go to the smaller power here. Um, 9 times 10 to the 6th is the smaller power. Moving this decimal 1 to the right means I'm taking a power away from my 10 to the 7th, which will give me 13 and 7 tenths times 10 to the 6th. Now I have the same power, so I can add those together, and I get 22 and 7 tenths times 10 to the 6th, not a number in scientific notation. So converting that, moving it to the left one place is like adding 1 to my power. I would get 2 and 27 hundredths times 10 to the 7th square kilometers for the sum of those areas. And again, I'm going to wait to the end and sable. Find the difference in them. Well, 9 times 10 to the 6th minus Oh, I should have put the other one first. I already knew that was larger. I'm going to put that one first. 1 and 37 hundredths times 10 to the 7th minus the difference. Always larger number has to come first. 9 times 10 to the 6th. So I'm going to do Antarctica minus Australia. Not the same power. So I'm going to convert the 13 and 7 tenths like I did over here times 10 to the 6, minus 9 times 10 to the 6, and 13 and 7 tenths take away whole 9 would be 4 and 7 tenths, oh, that is in scientific notation, times 10 to the 6, because I have a number between 1 and less than 10, times a power of 10. So, sabling both of these at once, Got a lot of space down here, Come down to the bottom. The sum of the land areas, using the words of the question, the sum of the land areas of the continents, or maybe not say that just to save some time, is about 2 and 27 hundredths times 10 to the 7th kilometers squared and Antarctica is about 4 and 7 tenths times 10 to the 6th pretty big difference kilometers squared larger than Australia. The pictures are deceiving here. Obviously, that's not drawn to scale. It's not drawn to scale. It almost looks like Antarctica is smaller, but it isn't. It's larger.
by millions of kilometers squared. Example four. I'm going to let you do this one. And it's not both an adding and subtracting. It's just adding. A standard CDR is about 1 and 2 tenths times 10 to the negative third meters thick. A thin coating on the CD is approximately 7 times 10 to the negative 8. Oh my gosh, that is teeny, teeny, tiny number meters thick. How thick is the CD with the coating added? So you've got to get equivalent or the same power. The hint, I think I would change the 7 times 10 to the negative 8 to negative third, moving that decimal to the left. I would go to the, the um, actual larger power, which is this. Okay, so uh, you try that one and uh, give it your best shot, say bullet, and we will go over that in class. So you might want to pause the video now. Fifth example that we have. Try these. Oh, no, we're not going to try these with our partner. Whoops. Change to standard form first and then add or subtract. No, we're not going to do that either. So let's not follow that direction. I'm not going to. You could do that, by the way. This whole time, I could change these to standard form and add or subtract. I try to keep them in scientific notation. So I'm not going to do what it says here. Let's cross that out. Didn't want to copy that. Place the final answer in scientific notation, yes. Okay, so a blue whale has the mass of about 190 million grams. The mass of a white shark is approximately two and six, two and six tenths times 10 to the fourth kilograms. What is the sum of the masses? Okay, well one's in scientific notation in kilograms and one is in standard form in grams. Well, they're not even in the same form, and we're not even talking about the same unit. So the first thing, carefully reading this, you have got to get them either to both be grams or both be kilograms. I'm going to go with kilograms. So to convert my King Henry danced before drinking chocolate milk, my grams are here in the middle. So I'm going to convert my grams to kilograms because there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So it's like taking three of these zeros off. Because yes, it's going one, two, three places to the left. So now this would be kilograms. So I have 190 thousand kilograms and two and six tenths times ten to the fourth kilograms. Okay, first things first there. Um, now I'm going to put this one in scientific notation at 190,000. Well that's one times one and nine tenths times ten to the fifth kilograms plus my two and six tenths times 10 to the fourth kilograms. Darn, not the same power. I'm going to change to the higher power. One and nine tenths times 10 to the fifth. To make that the higher power, I go one to the left, which is like adding to this exponent. So that would be 26 hundredths times 10 to the fifth. So I thought this one through a little bit here because now when I add those, I am going to get an answer in scientific notation. Had I gone to the smaller power, then I would have to convert. So I have to convert somewhere. 1 and 9 tenths and 26 hundredths is 2 and 16 hundredths times 10 to the fifth kilograms. Kilograms is the um, sable on that label. I'm not going to sable these ones just to save some time. 
Um, given the mass of a white rhinoceros, which we have these lovely pictures here to help us, is about 4,850 kilograms. Find the combined mass of the three animals. Well, I know two of them is 2 and 16 hundredths times 10 to the fifth. The white rhinoceros is 4,850 kilograms. Four. So if I move this decimal back three places, that gives me times 10 to the third. Now that's in scientific notation, but they're not the same power. I'm going to go with the bigger one again. 2 and 16 hundredths times 10 to the fifth. I'm going to have to go back two more to the left to get 0, 4, 8, 5, don't need that 0, times 10 to the fifth. Okay, now adding those together, they get 2 and 2,085 times 10 to the fifth kilograms. Wow. For the sum of all three of those animals, the blue whale, the white shark, and the white rhinoceros. And I'm not going to sable that one. Next one. Oh, okay. So yes, there are some well-known prefixes other than King Henry, right? Kilo, hecto, deca, de, desa, centimilla. There are more than just those six. And you've heard of many of these, like micro, nano, pico, mega millions. You know, right? Mega millions the, when you go to the New York State Lottery. Mega millions. Giga, terabytes on your computer now or on your hair, hard drive. You want to look for terabytes. Used to be gigabytes. Um, a nanosecond, how fast is a nanosecond? It's the billionths place. Micro and mega, I know well. Micro is millionths. Mega, mega millions, is millions. You should know like 10 to the 6th and 10 to the negative 6th. Everybody knows kilo is a thousand and milla is thousandths. Learn a couple new ones. So here's, and yes, there are even more of those. I'll talk about that tomorrow in class. I'll show you a chart that has many more than this. And you can see that they do use the Greek letters there. Mu is micro. That's the Greek letter mu right there. So um, we'll talk about this in class. It's good to uh, take a look at this. And yes, the next example does use this. The approximate, oh, I want to read this. The approximate width of a human hair can be expressed as 1 in 76 hundredths times 10 to the negative fourth meter. Using the prefix as shown in the table below, you could also say it's 10 to the negative seventh kilometer, it's 10 to the negative first millimeter, or it's 10 to the second micrometers, and so on. You could keep converting that. Interesting. On average, Pluto orbits the Sun at a distance of approximately 4,802 gigameters. Giga. Giga means billion. Or 10 to the ninth from our chart on the previous slide. Uranus's average distance from the Sun is about two and nine hundred and ninety two thousandths times ten to the ninth kilometers. Not talking about the same thing. Gigameters, kilometers. Which planet is farther from the sun and how much farther? I'm going to leave this one as a bonus. Give it a good shot. See if you can come up with this answer. And uh, we'll talk about it in class tomorrow. And that's it for today.